In this lesson, we'll overview the basic ideas of sample spaces, outcomes, events, and probability laws as they apply to common examples in probability theory. And we'll show how to relate the probability of the union of two events to the probability of the intersection of those same two events. In any situation where we use probability theory, we'll have a sample space of possible events. One classic example would be the flip of a fair coin, where the possible outcomes are heads and tails. And those two outcomes would make up the sample space, and in most situations, we'd be concerned with only two events. The coin flip shows heads, and the coin flip shows tails. If, though, we flip the coin twice, then the sample space would contain four possible outcomes. Heads on the first toss, heads on the second toss, heads on the first toss, tails on the second toss, tails on the first toss, heads on the second, and tails on the first, and tails on the second. Now as you should be able to see, one and exactly one of these outcomes must occur. The events could be things like heads only once, heads twice, tails on the first toss, heads on the second toss, and many others. And this simple example shows how quickly the set of events can become much more rich even for a, a fairly simple example. Now to complete the probability model for this example, we'd assign some probabilities to each of the events. For instance, we might say that the probability associated with the event of seeing at least one tail is 3 fourths or 0 0.75. Now the manner in which we assign probabilities for events will depend on the specific example, but in all situations, the probability law must satisfy the following conditions. First, the probability for any event must be a number between 0 and 1. And then the probability for the union of two disjoint events is equal to the sum of their individual probabilities. If, for example, our first event is heads on the first toss. That would include the two outcomes, heads, heads, and heads, tails. And if the second event is tails on both tosses, which would only include one outcome, tails and tails, then the probability that event one or event two happens is the sum of those two probabilities. If, however, event two is heads on the second toss, which would include the outcomes, heads and heads, and tails followed by heads, then we couldn't add the two probabilities to get the probability for the union of the two events because these two events are not disjoint. That is, they share an outcome in their intersection. Finally, the event that includes all possible outcomes must always have a probability associated with it that is equal to 1. Now in general, a probability model begins with some sample space. And the sample space is made up of all possible outcomes. Subsets of the sample space, or subsets of all of the possible outcomes, are called events, and we associate probabilities with those events. The probability we associate with the union of two disjoint events is the sum of their probabilities, but if the two events are not disjoint, then we use a new rule to determine the probability of their union. Well, as we do when they are disjoint, events, we start by adding their individual probabilities. But by doing so, we need to note that we double count the event that is the intersection of the two events. Therefore, we need to subtract the probability of the intersection event so that it isn't double counted. So the probability of the union of these two events is the probability of each event summed minus the probability that was double counted, and that's the probability of, that we associate with the event that is their intersection. Now this rule is very useful in many situations. And the utility of this rule is greatly enhanced in situations, by, in those situations by using De Morgan's laws, which say that the complement of the union of two events is the intersection of the complements of the events, and the complement of the intersection of two events is the union of their complements. As another example of how we use these concepts with probability laws, let's look at the situation where we've tossed two fair dice. Now the sample space of outcomes would be the 36 possible ways that we can roll two dice. 
The first die could show the numbers 1 through 6, and the second could show 1 through 6, and we get all combinations of those. Now, if the dice are fair, then we might associate a probability of 1 36th for each of the outcomes. That is, each outcome is equally likely, and all of the probabilities need to add to 1. Now, one possible event that we might associate with this experiment is that the second die show a 3. Now, the probability of that would be the sum of all the disjoint outcomes for which the second die shows a 3, and there's 6 of those, so we would get 6 36th or 1 6th for that probability. Another event might be that the first die shows a number greater than 3. Now, the probability for this event would be the sum of all of the disjoint probabilities associated with each of those outcomes, disjoint outcomes, and there's 18 of those, so we get 18 36th or 1 half. Now, to get the probability that the second die shows a 3 or the first die shows a number greater than 3, we could add the probability for the two events, 1 6 plus 1 half, and then subtract the probability that they both happen, or that their intersection, which is 3 out of 36. So the probability for their union would be 7 twelfths. Now for this problem, you might find the answer in a more direct way, but it's instructive to use the simple problems like this to illustrate the way that these powerful rules of probability work for more general situations.